Hello YouTube, it's Black Sun Goku. It's been a while since I did a deck profile of my modern deck, and I've made some new improvements. Not only playing red and black, I'm playing red, black, and blue mid-range modern deck with a very nice curve, really strong monster mechanic that I'm using, utilizing with a good amount of spells. And of course, I got some really strong planeswalkers and a really expensive uh, legendary creature. That I'll reveal later. So moving forward, four Vexing Devil. Awesome card for a one mana drop with the power of four and a toughness of three. This card's literally the, a beater of the beginning of the game. That's what my deck is about. Dealing as much damage because if your opponent has the option, the choice, where they want to sacrifice it, but it becomes their bound downfall because if they do, they take two, four damage. For, for one black mana is Falmar Knight. He is the consistency of the deck, plus he is the ability to use Adventure for my hand. And what I like my dad, he has Death Touch, so a very strong beater as well, early game. Another strong early uh, beater also is with two dark mana, Gifted Aetherborn. Has Death Touch as well, and Lifelink, ensuring that my that I, get, I, don't, I don't lose too much advantage. And have some way of beating my opponent and breaking them down. Four Flamewake Phoenix with two red mana and one normal mana. Has the ability Flying in Haste and Ferocious. So if I have any beaters with a powerful, which I do have right now, uh, Vexing Devil. This card comes in very handy because I, it's like a basically it's Vion Shock as a creature. And there are times if I just have the capability of just dealing more damage it. If I have this, if I have a creature with the power four, I'll deal even more after. Considering it can't block, it's worth the mana. I'm, I'm my strongest ace monster and another good addition to the black color mana. Four Desecration Demon with the power of two black mana and two normal mana. This creature has flying. And he's hard to get over because he has the ability flying, which meaning the same thing as flying, getting over monsters. Plus, even though, and then your opponent has to choose whether they want to tribute a monster to tap this creature, and it gets a 1-1 one, one plus, one plus counter. Meaning that it'll just keep getting stronger regardless if they get rid of the creature. Which is also a good thing because, like, I have ways of getting back uh, the Flaming Phoenix combined with this card. Our first legendary god creature is obviously the Scorpion God. Some people might be confused why he's in this deck. Simply because he has synergy with the Flaming Phoenix. He can come, he can, I can be pretty much your achievement because of his last effect. And plus he is the ability to wither my opponent's uh, mock creature as a power and toughness. And be allowing me to destroy th those creatures regardless in battle. And being able to draw that one card after because using this effect. And the, cre the new creature I haven't introduced yet, Scarab God. This card was also known as my very cheap. It's one of the cards I can use to help utilize this deck. Helping me get rid of a banished creature from my opponent's graveyard, even or including mine's, it's creating a black a zombie token four four and synergizing well with the phoenix that I mentioned, and it's another way you just keep bringing it out. It has the same effect as the scorpion god, where any time he dies, he comes back to my hand. Moving forward, obviously, for another four, four red, for for four copies of one red of lightning bolt, simply because I want to deal as much damage as possible. One, four, uh, one blue, of uh, uh, four copies of Opt, to ensure that I draw my cards, and I can scry, look to the top of my cards, see what I'm capable of pulling, and if I can somehow um, turn the duo around. A new addition is two Theta Horrors. It's a, it seem it might not seem like much, but I, it, it's slow because it, it only occurs during my upkeep. It excels the top card, but one thing I like is that deals additional damage for one to my opponent or planeswalker. And if I deal damage, I can activate a card from exiled by this effect. Exiled based on referring to this card's name also, only. And obviously, when I'm playing the two Chandra Torch of Defiance, simply for getting extra mana, getting more consistency, and trying to deal as much damage as my as possible. A new addition is Liliana. Death, Death's Majesty, simply if I want to create more creatures, revive a creature from my grave, and anything that revolves around destroying, I, which I definitely approve of, is 
getting rid of my opponent's monsters even, as long as they don't control any zombies. A new addition is Nicol Bolas, Dragon God. I'm only doing one copy because of his mana cost. And he has the, regardless, one copy is enough because he's able to gain the abilities of all of the Planeswalkers. Considering you can only play one of his Planeswalker. Hopefully if I have different Planeswalker, he just gets, he becomes more useful. So it's one is enough. For the lands. Four Evolving Wilds. It might seem slow because it taps a basic land, but because I'm playing three color lands, I need. I would rather max out on this instead of paying even more for a fetch land. To pay one with the with the cost of those fetch lands, it wouldn't be worth the mark the, the value of this deck. Cause I said it's worth it because you still have a lot more resources to pull. Like, and even if you you're forced to like not be able to tap that turn. You, at least you gain an extra land and it makes your deck more consistent instead of having to see multiple basic lands. So speaking of basic lands, we're only playing two mountains, one swamp, and one island. And for the others, for dual lands, one sulfur falls, two drowned catacomb, three dragon skull summit, three blood crypt, three black Le cleave cliffs, and for our tri lands, four crypt of the Eternals. And moving forward, I'm gonna go straight to my side. I'm not gonna explain too much, so because depending on the situation, I have two fatal push, one sweltering suns. Just to, in case my opponent has a, a small board, they use a, a lot of low mana creatures. I can cycle it to draw one, and I can push for each creature. That they control so one Bantu's last weapon to destroy my bones monsters two cun rows in case i want to finish them off fast a braid in case i want to deal with uh creatures again two duras if i want to deal with uh non-creature spells a relic of progenitus in case i want to just banish my ex on my opponent's entire graveyard so that they don't want to do infinite loops and i get a plus for more consistency a nice tech that i added was Nickel Bowls got her because in case I want to play another Planeswalker that can exile cards from my opponent's hand and be able to utilize their cards on and then be able to take control of their cards and place it onto my field simply because of its loyalty abilities. And the last two spells on my side deck are countervailing winds in case I want to just simply just negate a spell. And although its effect can be costly because it can be situations depending on the opponent's grave. I still find it useful in those situations. If, if they keep piling up cards, then this card becomes that more powerful later, late game. And hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll try and maybe do some match to get the content. For now, I'm still a beginner. I'm still trying to learn the basics. So in case you guys have any tips for me, uh, comment down below. Like, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed the video. Later.